Let's uh oh sorry, let's uh if you all turn on your video and just you know wave to everyone and say good morning. Yeah, turn morning. on your video. Morning. Yeah, morning. Hi, morning. Morning, morning. Hi, morning. William. Hi, William. Hi, Jonathan. Hi, William. Wow, hi, good to see you all. Hi. hi. Yeah. Good hi. to see you all. Hey. Angie Wenwei. Hi. Okay. Okay. Thank you, everyone. Good morning. Welcome to uh, Nusa Jaya Methodist Church uh, service. Yeah. So I pass the time to Justin. Justin Bieber. <laughs> Justin Bieber. <laughs> Just sir. A very good morning, church. Welcome to Nusa Jaya Methodist Church online service. May we prepare our hearts to worship the Lord this morning, even as we sing our first song, Living Hope. May we cling on to the hope that the Lord has given and the promises that He has made. Let us sing our first song, Living Hope. How great a chasm that lay between us How high a mountain I could not climb In desperation I turned to heaven Spoke your name into the night And through the darkness Your loving kindness Tore through the shadows of my soul The work is finished The end is written Jesus Christ my living home Imagine so great a mercy What I could fathom Such boundless grace A God of ages Stepped out from glory To where my sin Sets me free, hallelujah. 
Church, have you ever tried telling your life story to someone that you know? As a lifelong Christian, I have lots of hesitation and reservation when it comes to opening up to someone about my testimony. However, we must always remember that our personal stories of how we know Christ and how He has transformed our lives has the power to impact the lives of others and even bringing them one step closer to even knowing God. We should leave the results and the timing of their conversion entirely to God as we merely sow the seeds. The passage today that we'll be looking into will recount the testimony of Paul's conversion which occurred in a speech Paul gave when he was arrested in Jerusalem. Paul pointed to his experience as the most compelling proof of Christ's work in his life transformation. So may we in the same way rely in Christ alone to experience the same thing that Paul has experienced in his ministry. Let us sing our next song. No 
scheme of man can never pluck me from his hand till he returns calls me home here in the power of Christ I stand I once was lost and now I'm found. Church, every one of us live separate lives and we encounter different experiences throughout our journey of faith. You may be experiencing hardships or even difficulties in your life right now. And some of us may have wandered too far away from God. And when it seems that all hope is lost, no matter where you are, God is ever-present and His amazing grace will find you eventually because He loves you. His promises hold true and are everlasting. He will never leave you nor forsake you. And if you truly believe that, then let us sing together and declare unto Him this next song, Amazing Grace. The 
Let us continue with a time of uh, prayer and intercess, uh, intercessory prayer. Today, we want to thank God for giving us our mission to spread his gospel to those who need the, to hear his good news today. Uh, may our testimony reach out to those who need to have hope through his good news. Yeah, and we continue to pray for our country as you know, and many states are going into uh, phase two, first, phase three, and phase four of the recovery plan. We pray that the people will still be diligent to keep safe and well. Yeah, so we uh, want to thank God uh, for giving us, for those of us, we want to thank God for giving us opportunities to share his good news to the people. And we pray that during this time, we will continue to do so. And we ask that the Lord will uh, continue to give this mission uh, in put this mission in our heart to share his good news to the people. At this time also, I want to ask you all to remember, uh, I mean, it's not here, uh, lately the, we hear of the Orang Asli uh, in their kampongs, you know, where they, some of them, I mean, uh, uh, some of the kampongs, uh, Orang Asli kampong that we, we know that uh, they, they uh, also have been uh, positive cases, positive COVID cases in the kampongs and um, they sometimes do not know uh, what to do and all those things, yeah. And the the the, the orang asli pastors that we know uh, have been going around, you know, visiting all the all the kampongs. We pray that the Lord will keep the pastors safe, yeah. The orang asli pastors going into all the uh, orang asli kampongs. Uh, sometimes, you know, to do uh, burial because some of them, uh, some of the people have uh, passed away due to COVID. So we ask that the Lord will continue to keep. Uh, the Orang Asli pastors safe lah, uh, when they go and go their rounds uh, to visit the kampongs. Yeah, so we, uh, let us remember all this uh, in our prayers. Uh, so I will just open up that, uh, this time uh, for all of us to pray. And then after some time, I will end uh, with uh, a prayer. Yeah, let's just go to God in prayer. Father, I want to thank you, Father, for gathering each one of us here, Lord, to come together, Lord, to worship you, Lord, this day, Lord, this day that you've given us to us, Lord, uh, 
to come as a family to worship you. Father, we want to thank you. Father, we thank you, Father, for your presence with each one of us, wherever we are, whether we are in our office or whether we're at home or whether we are friends' home. Father, we thank you, Father, for your presence uh, with us. And we pray that even as we worship you, O Lord, even as we continue to hear your word, Father, we pray that you will work in our hearts, O Lord. You open our hearts and our eyes and our ears, Lord, uh, to, to hear from you, uh, from your word today, O Lord. Father, we thank you, Father, for uh, giving us this commandment, Lord, this mission of to go out and share your word to the people around us, Lord, to share the good news to the people, to give hope to the people, O Lord, uh, who may uh, not fight, who may not be finding any hope in life at this moment. So, Father, we pray that we will be your instruments, O Lord, to share your gospel, to reach out to the people and to give them your hope, O Lord. Father, we just want to uh, uh, pray for each one of us, even as we come, as you go, uh, to do uh, what you want us to do. Father, we want to pray for our country, Malaysia, Lord, even as many states are going uh, into uh, the, the phases of uh, recovery, oh Lord, the recovery plan, even as Johor goes into phase two and the other states, some are going uh, to phase three and some are going to phase four. Father, we pray that even though we are uh, uh, going out into all these phases, Father, we pray that the people will still be diligent to keep well and to keep safe, O oh Lord, Father. Father, we know that so many of them have been so cooked up in their own homes, Lord, that they cannot wait to go out. But Lord, we pray that even as they, 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 they go out, Lord, Father, we pray that they will be diligent to keep the SOP, O oh Lord. Father, we pray that uh, we know that the, 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 the virus is still around, O oh Lord, and it's very easily transmitted to another person. So Father, we pray. We pray for your mercy and for your grace to be upon uh, all of us in Malaysia. And so for those who are in Singapore where the cases have spiked up, Lord Father, we pray that you will also keep uh, all of us, all of them safe, O oh Lord, uh, wherever they are, O oh Lord. So Father, we pray. We pray for your people. We pray that all of us will keep, will be diligent to keep to the SOP and keep ourselves safe, Lord. And also that we will not be um, the people who will be spreading the virus to others, Lord. So, Father, we just want to continue to uh, pray for each one of us. And also want to remember the Orang Aslis, Lord, the, in, the, in the kampongs where, uh, in Malaysia, in wherever they are, whatever kampongs they are in. Father, we pray for them. Father, we pray that uh, even though they need, um, they have, uh, some have, uh, you know, have been COVID positive, we pray that they will be, they will know how to, uh, uh, be confined at home, O oh Lord, and pray, pray for all the pastors, the Orang Asli, Asli pastors who are going around to all the kampongs, that you will keep these pastors safe, O oh Lord, that they will also know how, they will also be diligent, Lord, to keep uh, themselves safe, O oh Lord, to keep to the SOP, O oh Lord, though it's quite hard, Lord, but Lord, we pray, we pray that you will keep them safe, O oh Lord, so we lift up all these, all the Orang Aslis in the kampongs to you, Father, we pray that your mercy will be upon them too, Lord. So, Father, we thank you, Father, for this time, for listening to our prayers, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. At this time, also, we want to bring our offering before the Lord. Uh, uh, as we have been doing uh, every week, we pray uh, uh, you can transfer your offering online and your pledges uh, to this account uh, every week. Uh, it's up there. So we continue to um, bless the Lord with our offerings and we know that the Lord will bless the offerings that, uh, uh, that we, we give. Yeah? So we want to thank you for your generosity. Uh, let's go to God in prayer. Uh, let's say the offertory prayer. Father, we thank you, Father, for uh, each one of us, Lord, for giving each one of us a generous heart. Father, we know that times are bad, Lord, but yet we see that your people have been giving a lot financially and we want to thank you. I want to thank you, Father, for, for, um, for blessing uh, your people and we pray that we will also be a blessing to the others. So even as uh, we offer to you uh, uh, this offering, Lord, Father, we ask that you bless it, that we will use it, Lord, to further your kingdom here on earth a lot. 
So Father, we uh, lift up this offering to you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Let us now sing the uh, doxology. Today's scripture reading is from the book of Acts, chapter 22, verses 1 to 21. I'm reading from the NIV, verse 1. Brothers and fathers, listen now to my defense. When they heard him speak to them in Aramaic, they became very quiet. Then Paul said, I am a Jew born in Tarsus of Cilicia, but brought up in this city. Under Gamaliel, I was thoroughly trained in the law of our fathers and was just as jealous for God as any of you are today. I persecuted the followers of his way to their death, arresting both men and women and throwing them into prisons. Also, the high priest and all the council can testify. I even obtained letters from them to their brothers in Damascus and went there to bring these people as prisoners to Jerusalem to be punished. About noon, as I came near Damascus, suddenly a bright light from heaven flashed around me. I fell to the ground and heard a voice say to me, Saul, Saul, why do you prosecute me? Who are you, Lord? I asked. I am Jesus of Nazareth, whom you are persecuting, he replied. My companions saw the light, but they did not understand the voice of him who was speaking to me. What shall I do, Lord? I asked. Get up, the Lord said, and go into Damascus. There you will be told all that you have been assigned to do. My companions let me by the hand into Damascus, because the brilliance of the light had blinded me. A man named Anassus came to see me. He was a devout observer of the law and highly respected by all the Jews living there. He stood beside me and said, Brother Saul, receive your sight and add that very moment, I was able to see him. Then he said, The God of our fathers has chosen you to know his will and to see the righteous one and to hear words from his mouth. You will be his witness to all men of what you have seen and heard. And now what are you waiting for? Get up, be baptized, and wash your sins away calling on his name. When I returned to Jerusalem and was praying at the temple, I fell into a trance and saw the Lord speaking. Quick, he said to me, leave Jerusalem immediately because they will not accept your testimony about me. Lord, I replied, these men know that I went from one synagogue to another to imprison and beat those who believe in you. And when the blood of your mortal servant had shed, I stood there giving my approval and guarding the groups of those who were killing him. Then the Lord said to me, Go, I will send you far away to the Gentiles. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Amen.
Okay, thank you, Lillian, for uh, reading the passage today. Now, before I go into my uh, my passage, yeah, can I can uh, I ask you to switch on your video because I want to ask you a question and I want you to respond. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Now, now today, uh, as you all can see, the the title of the. Uh, Sermon is testimony. Yeah? We're going to look and into Paul's testimony. So I want to ask everyone of us here, everyone of us, um, you have shared your testimony. How many of y'all have shared your testimony to at least five people? Just raise your hand. Just let me see. At least five people you have shared your testimony. Okay, thank you very much. Let me share my screen, yeah. Okay. Now, testimonies, testimonies are a good tool to be used to reach out to the people. Now, have, testimonies have been used, testimonies have been used um, to, start to start a conversation with someone uh, we have just met uh, that will lead to us sharing the good news to that person. So testimony is a good tool to use for evangelism. And there are so many, so many um, testimony booklets. I've read so many testimony booklets of you know, people uh, sharing their testimony of how God has um, uh, touched their lives, how they have come to, to believe in the Lord. Yeah, um, And these booklets have it's not only to encourage uh, the Christians, but also when pre-believer uh, read these testimonies, uh, they are also uh, touched by these stories. And maybe one day they will come to believe in the Lord. Testimonies of miracles that happen in, in the person's life. Every, everyone, I would say, everyone likes to hear uh, testimonies of how uh, the Lord has transformed them. The Lord has changed them. So these are the, the stories that will pull uh, at the person's heart. Yeah? The person that we want to share the testimony uh, to. They want to, sh you know, in later time, share the good news to the person. These are the stories that will pull the person uh, maybe to God. Um, every, every testimony, every testimony, pulls the heart, pulls the heart of the people to our Lord Jesus Christ, yeah, when, when we share. And our testimony, our testimony is his story in our lives. Our testimony is his story, God's story in our lives. And we see the grace of God in our lives. Yeah, even, even recently, I've also heard uh, you know, a testimony, somebody forwarded me a, a video of somebody sharing their testimony and, and it was very encouraging uh, to me. So it, it pulled, so-called it pulled my heart uh, towards our God who is full of grace and mercy. So we as his children, what we need to do is to share this share our testimony, share the good news to the people. And it is God who will convert them in his own timing. We do our duty to share the word and God will be the one to convert these people to him. Yeah. So I also, I think I myself have a lot of uh, 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 you know, testimonies of how the Lord has worked. Uh, in my life, how I've experienced the goodness of God and how I've experienced 
uh, healing, uh, both physically and spiritually. So these are testimonies that, uh, uh, that we can share to encourage the people uh, around us. So today, today I would like to do something different. Yeah. Uh, uh, today, I want to give everyone of us here a chance to share our testimony to one another. So if we are not comfortable sharing our testimony, then how, I mean, to, to, to one another here, how are we to share our testimony to the people yeah, who are seeking? So today, we will all be sharing our testimony yeah, after this. So first, we will hear the test, Paul's testimony first. Yeah, so let us pray before we, we begin. Father, I want to thank you, Father, for each one of us here. Father, we thank you, Father, for the stories, for your story in our life that we can share with the people around us, that we can give hope to the people around us, and we can, and with the stories that you have put in our lives, Lord, we pray that they will pull the hearts of the people to you, Lord, to you. So, Father, we just want to lift up this time to you. May the words of my mouth and the meditations of our hearts be acceptable to you, Lord our rock, our strength, and redeemer. Amen. So today, we will, uh, first we will hear uh, Paul's testimony first, yeah? So today's uh, passage, today's passage is the first of, uh, of uh, uh, Paul's uh, defense uh, and the speech that he made uh, before uh, uh, the people. So this is the first of his defense speeches, and then there will be two more later, but with different audience. Yeah, when he 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 goes before uh, the Romans, uh, Roman Roman Council. So his defense is not so much um, as defending himself, but the defense of the gospel, and Paul's call and mission is to bring the good news of salvation to the people. And what is the good news uh, that he, he brings to the people? That Jesus Christ came into the world. He suffered and he was crucified. He died and he was buried. But he was resurrected on the third day. On the third day he rose and he gave eternal life to all who will believe. So the gospel offers hope in God to people of every nation through Jesus Christ. As we can see in the book of Acts, yeah, the mandate is to share uh, the word of, uh, the good news to everyone in, uh, in Jerusalem, Judea, in all Judea and Samaria and to the ends of the earth. And through Jesus Christ, we have a relationship with God. So in this passage, Paul, um, yeah, I want to thank, uh, before I forget, so I thank Justin for, for, for uh, uh, leading us in the worship just now. I think it, he, he really, uh, you know, uh, what's it, what you call that, spot on uh, to, to when he led the songs uh, that uh, in the worship just now, uh, which was uh, very, very uh, appropriate to what we are, going to hear today. Um, so in the passage, uh, Acts 21, today's Acts 22, right? Acts 21 at the end, the passage we read about Paul uh, being arrested, yeah? The, 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 some of the Jews make, uh, uh, started a, a riot uh, because of Paul, yeah? And then the riot was going on and then the Roman soldiers, uh, you know, when they saw the riot, they just went and then they went and see who is the, the source of the riot. And then they say it's Paul and then they just capture Paul without knowing what's, what happened. Uh, they just you know, uh, capture Paul and then want, uh, bring him to, to the, the, the prison. So Paul, Paul before, I mean, when the Roman soldiers want to bring him into the prison, Paul asked permission from the commander if he could speak to the crowd. Yeah, and, and when he was speaking to the commander, he was speaking in Greek. To, so the commander was uh, no surprise that he can speak Greek. And then 
okay, then he got the permission of the commander to, to speak to the people. So in this uh, passage, what we can see is Paul's, this Paul's testimony, uh, first from verses uh, uh, one to five, he, had, he started with his introduction. He introduced himself. And then from verse six to, verse six to 16, he shared about his conversion. Yeah, he shared about his conversion, the salvation he received. And then the last part, 17 to 21, he shared about action, the action, what he did after that. So it's a three part, he introduced himself and then he shared about his conversion and then what he did uh, uh, when he was converted. So he started, I think uh, he, he began his address uh, respectfully. Yeah, he started, brothers and fathers, listen now to my defense. So he, he, he respectfully uh, addressed the people, yeah? And then when he spoke, he spoke in the Aramaic, the Hebrew dialect, uh, the Aramaic uh, uh, language, the dialect. And then because the people heard that he was speaking uh, in Aramaic, they became quiet. So they quieted down because they want to catch and hear what he's trying to say. Then we continue in verse three. In verse three, Paul said, I am a Jew. So it's, this is an introduction of himself. I am a Jew born in Tarsus of Cilicia, but brought up in this city. Now, if you remember in Acts chapter 9, Acts chapter 9 is where, uh, where the story of Paul's conversion, how he was, uh, you know, he, he was in a Damascus road, yeah, how the Lord met him in the Damascus road. So this is when he shared his testimony here in Acts 22. Uh, we can refer yeah, back to Acts chapter 9 when he was uh, telling also about his uh, experience and his introduction. In, um, so from verse 3 to 5, he was telling, his, sharing his testimony. And we confirm that when he said, I'm a Jew born in Tarsus of Cilicia, we confirm it in Acts chapter 9, verse 11, when the Lord told Ananias, yeah, when the Lord told him, this Ahim is Ananias, go to the house of Judas on Straight Street and ask for a man from Tarsus named Saul. And then in Acts 21, 39, Paul answered, I am a Jew from Tarsus in Cilicia. Yes. So this confirmed that what he shared is true, yeah just to compare information. Yeah. So after, after um, coming to Jerusalem, the next part we see, I studied under Gamaliel and was thoroughly trained in the law of our ancestors. So he, he grew up, he went to Jerusalem. Yeah, he grew up in Jerusalem, so-called. And he went under the person named Gamaliel. And the Gamaliel's name, we first heard Gamaliel's name in Acts chapter 5, verse 34. But a Pharisee named Gamaliel, a teacher of the law, who was honored by all the people. So this Gamaliel is a very uh, a, a man who is respected by the people. And he's, he's a Pharisee, yeah? Gamaliel is a Pharisee. That's why Paul grew up being a Pharisee, because he was under this, uh, this uh, teacher, uh, Gamaliel. So Paul, Saul, Paul is a Pharisee in terms of education. He's a law abiding Jew. And he continued to say, I was zealous, as zealous for God as any of you today. So he, went, he said this so that to let them know that he understands their motivation of doing this. So Paul's uh, opening remarks provide an inf uh, something to calm the people down. And then in verses 4 and 5, he uh, explained more about himself. He introduced more about himself. I persecuted the followers of this way. That means the way, that means those who believe in Jesus Christ yeah, to their death. Arresting both men and women. 
and throwing them into prison. So uh, this we can see in Acts chapter 9, verses 1 and 2, where he was really persecuting the people, God's people. He knows the high priest, he, get the, he got letters from the high priest to get, go to Damascus to arrest these people, to catch these people and put them in prison. And then this is his introduction from verses one to five, where he, he introduced himself, where he's from, and then what he did before his conversion. So this is his introduction. So this description, this description of himself, of what he did uh, as a persecutor of Christians opened the way for him, for Paul, to describe his conversion because next he went on to describe his conversion, the salvation, how he received, how he was, how he received salvation and how he was converted. So about noon, I came, as I came near Damascus, this is where he started to share, uh, where we find this incident he shared in Acts chapter 9 or so, verse 3 to 5, as he neared Damascus, uh, on his journey, suddenly a bright light from heaven flashed around him. So this is not a vision, yeah? This is not a vision or a dream that Paul had, yeah? Because this light really blinded Paul. So this is real. And uh, there are people here, there were companions with him uh, that also saw the light and heard some sound, but they do not know what, what was being said. And Paul you know, when, 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 when the, uh, Jesus said, Saul, Saul, why do you persecute me? And Saul asked, who are you, Lord? He, he, he even asked, who are you, Lord? That he knows that, you know, uh, you know, it is Jesus of Nazareth who is talking to him. And then he continued to say that a man named Ananias came to see me. A man named Ananias. So we see, compare it to Acts chapter 9, verse 15 to 18. Yeah, this is where Ananias heard of Paul, where the Lord speak to Ananias to go and heal Paul. Yeah. So the, the instruction from the Lord was to Ananias was to go and heal Paul and make, uh, make sure, I mean, uh, heal his blindness so that he can see. And after that, we read that, you know, Paul uh, was baptized. Paul was baptized. Um, and that, so that his sins could be washed away. So Paul called on the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. So that is, uh, I mean, through all this incident, that is how Paul was converted, yeah, uh, by his experience in the road to Damascus. So Paul's testimony, so he started with his introduction of who, where he's from and what did he do, and then he continued with uh, his uh, conversion experience of what happened in the road to Damascus and how he was converted, how the Lord converted him, yeah, and the people who were involved in converting him and also uh, baptizing him. So there's the introduction and then uh, the conversion, the salvation. And thirdly, action. After the introduction, after the conversion or salvation, what did Paul do? Yeah, what did he do? When I returned to Jerusalem, when I had returned to Jerusalem and was praying in the temple, I fell into a trance and saw him saying to me, <clears throat> make haste and get out of Jerusalem quickly. So this, this part is when Paul, when he first converted, yeah, he was in Damascus, he was first, when he first converted. And then <clears throat> he traveled to, Jerusalem after his conversion. 
искусство. And during that time, I mean, in all I, Paul's, uh, what he did, he always, when he goes to a city, if you remember, he always go to the synagogue first. He always go to the temple first. <coughs> so when he went to Jerusalem, he went to the temple or he went to the synagogue and he prayed. That was his uh, so-called katana. Uh, and there, that is here when he says that when I returned to Jerusalem, and was praying in the temple. So he went and he was praying. This was uh, during the time when he first converted. And then when the people, um, <clears throat> excuse me, the believers uh, still could not accept him, except for Barnabas. Yeah, and then he, the Lord told him that he had to leave because the people uh, are not uh, going to accept him. But then Paul also said, Lord, they themselves know that in one synagogue after another, I imprisoned and beat those who believed in you. And when the blood of Stephen, your witness was being shed, I myself was standing by and approving and watching over the garments of those who killed him. Yeah, so he was saying that they already know me already. So why, why should I, I know, leave Jerusalem? But then the Lord said, Go, for I will send you far away to the Gentiles. So the Lord is um, uh, telling Paul that he, the Lord will send him to places where he will, be, he will reach out to the Gentiles. So Paul was put into action. Yeah, This means that traveling to cities to reach the Gentiles. So that's why we see all we read of Paul's missionary journeys of, of the cities that he went to, yeah, to, to share the gospel. And so Paul's testimony, how he did his testimony, he first introduced himself, yeah, and then his, then his uh, conversion, his salvation, how he received salvation, how he was converted uh, to become uh, a Christian, yeah, become a believer. And then after that action, that means what he did after he was converted, the, the uh, God uh, told him what he wants, what God wants Paul to do. So he was, you know, uh, uh, he. I mean, God was leading him all the way. Yeah. So God told him that this is what I want you to do. Is that is to reach out to the Gentiles. So this is um, uh, what you call uh, the steps uh, uh, of how we can how we can learn from Paul to share our testimony to yeah first we introduce ourselves and then we share how we came to believe in the Lord Jesus Christ and then after that after we believe what did we do yeah just a simple one just a simple one to share with people you know people around us. So we, we, we have to know uh, how, how we came to be a believer yeah? to, to, um, to share uh, God's, uh, to share the good news to the people. So sharing our testimony, sharing our testimony, how, how can our testimony pull the hearts of the people listening to us. How can our testimony pull the hearts of the people listening to us to the Lord Jesus Christ? To the Lord Jesus Christ. What is his story in our lives? What is his, his grace in our lives? How can we share yeah, uh, God's uh, story in our lives and God's grace in our lives? Uh, I see, can see here God on the slide, yeah, God, this is a prayer, God, God, so often in scripture, you send that message of fear not to your people, yet so often, we live according to, the, to our fears, you promise to give us strength enough to live according to our faith, our loves, 
and our hopes. May we so live. Amen. So at this time, um, I would like to uh, break y'all into uh, breakout rooms to share your testimony with one another. That's why uh, my uh, message today is short so that we will have time to share our testimony with one another, even as we hear uh, Paul's testimony and what, how, how, he, how he did his, what steps he used to share his testimony. What we can share is, of course, Next time when we, we go out, we, we see people and we see their situation, we, we, we can change how we share. But for today, when we share with one another, we just use these simple steps of just introducing yourself, how you came to believe in the Lord. And after that, after you believe what happened, yeah, just to share with one another. So we give, I give this opportunity to everyone. Um, no, we, we practice, you know, if we, we are not... Um, what you call, uh, we're not, uh, you know, what you call, uh, at ease of sharing our testimony with one another here, how do we share to the people that we're going to meet outside? Yeah, so we share and we, you know, it's just a, a practice and then it's a tool, a very good tool to pull uh, the people's heart to, to the Lord. Yeah, so I want to, uh, ask uh, Dominic to break us all into small groups. And I hope that all of you will switch on your video so when you're talking to each other, you can look at each other and uh, share your testimony with one another. Yeah, okay. I pass the time to Dominic to do it. Okay, so join the room, yeah? Join. No, I say, how come you are in my room? We should not be put together. We should be separate. I, you stay in this room. Lah. I asked Dominic to put me. Hello? Eva? I, can, can, you, can you unmute yourself? Hi, Joseph. Hey, hi. Hey, I, uh, I, 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 I think uh, uh, no, I think husband and wife should not be in the same room, lah. I know. I yeah, know. so I'm going to I'm going to leave the room and ask Dominic to put me somewhere else. What do you uh, mean, husband? You you mean Evelyn is with you? You, you cannot see Evelyn, man. No. Huh? <laughs> yeah, no, how, come, yeah, uh, how come you cannot see her? Yeah, yeah, yeah she, she's here. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, oh, okay I, yeah. I, I, I will leave to join another room, lah, because I think no. husband and wife together is not a good uh, for uh, this testimony. Time. No, I, I, I think it's okay. La. So huh? that uh, Ming will say, no, that's not true. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no. I, I believe so la, because it yeah, it, it should be. Yeah. Okay, wait. I leave. Where are, where well, I think, I think, I think they put all the Singaporeans together. Where's Dominic, are you there, Dominic? Hello, Dominic. Dominic.
Dominic, are you there? No. And later, on, and later on, when he was uh, in, um, I couldn't find any room to join. <laughs> so you came back here, okay? So I came back. Yeah, when he had, um, I guess, when he hit that, uh, you know, that plateau in his life, and he needed to find God again, he recalled my 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 sharing with him, and he 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 accepted Christ, his whole family, and uh, today I guess he he's an elder in the church in Perth. So Three again. That's interesting. Uh, that how a sharing, like what Pastor said, can talk at somebody's life. Sorry, that's I, all I have to share. Yeah. You're supposed to share your testimony. Yeah, that's my testimony. <laughs> of how you your, became your own testimony or how you became a Christian. My my that's not so much, but the whole thing, thing is to share my mm -hmm. life and how it has uh, planted uh, you know somebody to so called it, it's for sowing the seed. Because I think <laughs> some of you have heard my testimony. You know, you know, I, you know, you know the worst thing that we can do, right? When we are taking our exams, uh, in you know the in pre-university, you know essay right, writing, right? Yes. <laughs> hey, my my son did that. I got A one. My son did that. I got A one in Chinese. <laughs> yeah. That's what he claimed. <laughs> anyway, to cut the long story short, uh, my my uh, testimony is that I think I don't know because as I look back, uh, it's probably uh, it's a uh, I don't think I actually. Uh, pursue uh, God, you know. I don't think so, you know. I think it's he God pursues who pursues me, you know, because yes. he puts into me uh, a, a void, uh, an emptiness uh, which is so deep that, you know, I cannot get out of it, you know. I cannot get out of it. I, no matter what I do, uh, I, I get involved in uh, games, uh, I get involved in hobbies, uh, you know, I do all kinds of things and all that. You can't get away from it, okay. So, you know, that's how I was led to... Uh, to join uh, this uh, group of my friends, footballers, uh, together. I don't know how 
how how we did it, but we found this small church, ah, uh, you know that we got attached to, and then uh, slowly, uh, you know, we attended like uh, you know, we we were not uh, you you can say that we are pre-believers lah. So we joined the uh the 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 church, and uh, through uh, Bible study and all that, ah, uh, slowly uh, then uh, it led me to become baptized, ah. Uh. You know, so uh, I think for me, ah, uh, it's a case actually. As I look back, and then now uh, that I get uh, to study about Arminianism and uh, Calvinism, uh, I think Calvinism was at work in me, lah. Okay, for my situation, uh, I you know I don't want to go into a debate between these Arminians and uh, Calvinists. I I accept both. <laughs> <laughs> I I only know that as long as you accept Christ as your savior, uh, okay, and really trust in Him, you will be saved, lah. Okay, so. Yeah, that's me lah. Okay, S. Yes. Huh? Why is that? How old were you? I was uh, I think at that time I was uh, just out uh, just just completed I national service I think uh oh. no 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 completed sorry I I was I was in national service at that time okay okay yeah nineteen I think nineteen nineteen years old okay as for me as for me um I was introduced to Jesus when I was at. In primary four by my form teacher, wow. and I can still remember him. He's Mr. Paul Wee. Every Sunday he will come to come and fetch me to church. Wow. So that's how I learned to come. I, I mean, because Jesus uh, was part of the history lesson, you know. So yeah. um, also during recess, uh, he will come and talk to me about Jesus. All right, and then he encouraged me to go to Sunday school. And um, he will come to my house and fetch me to Sunday school, and I, I am from the uh, Buddhist, Buddhist family. You know, my parents are all Buddhist, but my parents didn't stop him from bringing me to church. So as time goes on, um, he he left for another school, so he didn't come and fetch me. But then I carry on with my neighbor, uh, whose uh, boyfriend is a pastor. And then I just carry on from there to join Sunday school. And that's how I grow to know Christ. But then as I, I get older and then join nursing, okay, it sort of um, puzzled me because I, I look around me and I say, all the nurses, wow, I say their characters are very uh, like so virtuous, you know. And I'm like An- a, angelic, angelic. A very angelic, <laughs> you know. So wow, I like wow. uh, in, 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 in among them, uh, I, I feel like Wow, I I I no match to them, you know. I, I say I'm a great, you know. But then in my own heart, I also feel that I've not done anything wrong. But then they also encourage me to uh, join a meeting. We call it a Christian Nurses Fellowship. So at that meeting, somebody who, whom I still we are still in contact with, she says she opened the meeting and says that we are all sinners, you know. So at that time, I mean, although I have attended Sunday school and all that. I've never come across people accusing me as a sinner, you know. So I took offense to it and said, I have never committed anything. Why, should, why am I a sinner, you know? So, but then in my own heart, I was also, because the people around me are so angelic, I, I also endeavor to be like them, you know. And uh, at that point of time, I say that, oh, in our life, we should have one instruction manual to teach us. Okay, we are going back already to the oh, main room. Oh, right. They got we got knocked out. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Bring back Rina. He's yeah, putting yeah. us back. We go back. Where's Lily? Lily is Lily. Yeah, Rina knocked out already. Go back to the main room. Yeah, yeah. yeah so we're not knocked out yet. I'm also going to go. I'm going to knock out myself. We got to exit, is it? Uh, actually, I since we are here, we might as well exit ourselves. How do you do that? You leave. But, right? Leave room. You, leave room. Yeah. You just click the blue button. Leave room on the right hand bottom corner. But you might never get on again. No, you. you then you sign back, Rina. It's okay, one. Yeah, leave breakout room. Is everybody back? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Back. All right. Okay. I hope every one of you had a chance to share your testimony with one another. Yeah. And I hope that uh, by sharing the testimony, we will know uh, one another a bit better. Yeah. And then uh, it's also part of uh, practicing our sharing our testimony so that when we uh, meet with people, uh, at least we are a bit familiar, a little bit more familiar with our own, uh, our his story, God's story in our lives, yeah, and how our lives, our testimonies, uh, can pull uh, the people 
uh, you know, to God. Uh, not pull the people to us, yeah. Pull the people to God. Yeah, so these testimonies, we pray that uh, 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 you will be able to pull the people to God. So just want to close by uh, sharing this, um, um, you know, this prayer by this, uh, I got it from the Moravian uh, daily text, yeah. So he says that, you know, um, bring us closer to you, O Lord, so that we may hear your call from our places of darkness and comfort. Call us, call on us to be laborers yes. of your world. Before our time on earth is over, may our service please you. Amen. So let us, uh, at this time, just want to uh, close with a word of prayer to her. Uh, let's just close. Father, we want to thank you, Father, for giving us the opportunity to share our testimony with one another. And we know that this testimony is to pull people to you, O Lord, and not to us, O Lord. So, Father, we thank you, Father, for your grace in our lives, O Lord, for your story in our lives. Father, we pray that we will continue to, uh, continue to uh, reach out to the people through our testimonies. So, in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Okay, we can sing our closing song.
Let's pray. Father, we thank you, Father, for this time that you have been with us, Father, for, for, for uh, speaking to us, Lord, through your word, O oh Lord, for teaching us, Lord, through Paul's testimony. Father, we want to thank you, Father. Father, even as we continue, O oh Lord, to, to uh, share your testimony, uh, share our testimony about you, Lord, to the people, Father, we pray that uh, they will be able, that we will be able to put them to you, O oh Lord. So, Father, we thank you, Father, for each one of us here. And let us receive the benediction. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord made his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord turn his face toward you and give you peace. The grace of the Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with all of you now and forever. Amen. Let's sing the three, four, amen. Okay, let's just sing a cappella, yeah? For some announcements, yeah, at, at this time, uh, thank you for uh, being here, coming to the service. Now, we want to welcome all of you who are, anybody new here, uh, I want to welcome back Jerry, if, uh, no, he has, uh, I mean, he's gone off for a study for a year now, he's back with us, so we want, we want to welcome him back, yeah, so yeah, so we want to welcome him back. Woo, Jerry. <laughs> okay, next uh, in the, in the, okay. We actually also want to uh, thank uh, these people, <laughs> Brian, Daniel, Joy and Joyce, uh, fifth year, they've already graduated and they will be, I think, I think maybe uh, uh, some of them have been, uh, I mean, uh, traveling back to, to their uh -huh. own, a homes hometown already so that they didn't join us today but we want to continue to pray for them even as they uh, i mean they have graduated and they're going out and they have to wait for their postings yeah so we pray that the lord will send send them to where he wants him, them to be there so we want to thank uh thank uh, brian daniel joy and joyce for serving in nmc uh when they're here and it was really a uh, a blessing to the church uh, to have them serving here uh, in NMC. So I want to thank uh, them and we pray for God's uh, uh, yeah, to, to, to continue to lead them. Yeah. Okay. Um, next. Uh, yes. The sheet t-shirts are still uh, on sale. Yeah. For those who really, those who wants to uh, buy the t-shirt is still, uh, still here. I mean, we still uh, have stock here. So uh, when you want to come, you let me know. Uh, then uh, can, you can come and, and buy the T-shirt. Ah, this Thursday, we will be having our corporate prayer. I want to encourage uh, all of you to join us for the corporate prayer. Um, I think all of us know that prayer is very important. Uh, prayer is very important for our for the church life, and everybody should come and pray together as a church. Yeah, for the church, for the country, uh, for our families. Yeah, so come uh, this Thursday, uh, come and pray uh, together, uh, all of us. Uh, next, we have. 
yeah, so every week, without fail, we will have our Nusa praise kids. Yeah, I want to see all of them. Uh, uh, you know, and I think those, the teachers who are teaching them uh, have this joy of seeing how they have grown. Uh, uh, this past year, through online, online classes, how they've grown. And uh, we pray that more we'll be able to, uh, you know, expand uh, and then uh, create, uh, get more, more of these children to come and join us. So if you know of any grandchildren or children, you know, 12 years old and below, you can uh, encourage them to come and join us in uh, Nusa Praise Kids. Uh, next, Anit. Ah, we have birthdays this week. Karen, I think she's not here today. And Irene, Irene, Irene is uh, Terence's wife, uh, Irene Wu. Irene, so we want to wish them a happy birthday. I think both of them are also not in our <laughs> service today. So we also want to wish them, uh, for those who know their number or whatever, we, you can wish them a happy birthday. Karen was on Friday, if I'm not mistaken, or Thursday, yeah. Irene is actually tomorrow, I think. Yeah, so we can be sure. Uh, happy birthday. And then since they are not here, we, we don't sing the song. Uh, <laughs> Abu Roja, uh, happy birthday song. Yeah. Okay, so now uh, let us uh, on our uh, unmute ourselves on our video and let us uh, have fellowship with one another before you all go and have, have a busy day and a busy weekend. Yeah. Yeah, so glad to see all of you all. Uh...